Okay, guys, let's get uh, let's get started. If you're watching us on uh, on live stream, we uh, we're well, we're glad you're with us. We welcome you. Uh, thankful, thankful that you're watching us. Uh, you guys in class, good to have you here. Uh, you, I know you can't see them because we've got this kind of blocked off, but uh, there's about 25 people here, 20 people. Uh, good good class. Uh, we're going to be in First John this morning. And again, thank you for, for being with us. Thank you for, for coming uh, and joining us online. Uh, if you got here by mistake, we're this is Central Church of Christ in Victoria, Texas. And if you're watching us on Facebook, we'd love for you to share this video with uh, with uh, some of your friends. and. Hopefully, uh, you'll you'll learn something and get something out of it. Hey, good to see you. Uh, let's pray and we'll get started. Like I said, we're going to be in First John chapter four. If you want to turn over turn over after the prayer. Let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you so much for the opportunity we have to be here. We're thankful, Father, that you're for your love and your watch and your care over us. We're grateful, Father, that uh, that you uh, that you had your hand on on uh, on us, and we pray your blessing on us as well. Father, we uh, we ask that you be with our families. Uh, you know, I know of a couple of families that are are down. Uh, Sarah Bowman's uh, daughter and son-in-law are down, and and I just pray, Father, for them, and I pray for for all of our families and all the members here that are that are still struggling, and and uh, and some have uh, have been diagnosed positive, and I just pray, Father, for them. I've seen there's some here that uh, that have gotten better, and uh, and we're thankful for that as well, Father. Bless us as we move forward. Bless us as a church. And bless us, Father, as individuals as we move forward. Thank you uh, for all that you're doing for us and doing with us in our lives. The opportunities that are that are here are are uh, overwhelming, and we thank you for that, Father. Uh, again, be with us as we study this morning. Be with us as we worship this morning. And thank you for the opportunity. It's in the name of your Son we pray. Amen. We're in First John chapter four, and we're going to be in verse thirteen. But I want to review a little bit. Uh, what we what we talked about last week, what we've been talking about from First John for a while, is uh, is that that God God's love for us and God living in us is what we talked about last week. Him living in us, and uh, that happens through the atoning sacrifice. Remember, we talked about the atoning sacrifice that that's the payment that God that was demanded for us. The, the payment of, of sacrifice that Jesus went through, and Jesus did that for us so that I could have a relationship with the Father, so that I could have a, a, a place next to Him, so I could have Him, a knowledge of Him living with me and me an opportunity to live with Him. Uh, that The love that He had for me, we talked about that as well, the love that He has for me is, uh, is uh, made perfect, and we'll talk about that some more this morning, but it's made perfect in me. Made complete is what he calls it. That means made perfect in me. Uh, that love that he has for me, when it when it translates from me to someone else and it goes full circle, that's how that love is translated and made complete in us. Now, we're going to be in verse thirteen, and uh, and I'll refer back. I've got a I've got one part of this that we're going to refer back to in, into First John a couple of places uh, because of what it says. But but uh, uh, we've talked about God God living in us. And verse 13, uh, this is how we, and he, I'm going to just read part of it. It says, this is how we know that we live in him and he in us. This is how I know that I live in him. What he's going to talk about. I'm going to talk about that. How do I know that I live in him? What do I need to do? What do I? What does the text tell me that said, okay, you are living in him? Listen to what he says first. He said, we, this is how we know that we live in Him and He in us. He has given us of His Spirit. There's three things here we're going to talk about. Okay, this is the first one. We've talked about this before. When, I'm, when I give myself to Him, when I'm obedient to Him and I say, God, I trust You, I want to make You my life. I want to, make, I want to be a part of You and You in my life. And when I'm baptized into Christ, God tells me that He gives me the gift of the Holy Spirit. We've looked at this before. We've looked at it over and over. We talked about what it means for the Spirit to live in me. What, is it, what does it mean? We looked, went, Remember a couple of weeks ago we went to the book of Romans and we talked about what does it mean that He helps me in my weaknesses. He testifies on my behalf. You know, He, he uh, helps me to endure the things that I'm trying to endure. Those are things that the Holy Spirit is doing in my life. You know, I don't know that you have a have a moment in your life where, where uh, uh, He... Uh, 
where he where he makes himself known, where you know for sure something's going on. We talked about that Friday night. That that's happened to me before in the jail, where I've walked in the jail, sat down, taught something in the jail, and know absolutely that it was not me teaching. I know that I walked out, tried to explain to Richard Rendon what happened, and I cannot remember what it was that we talked about. And I just walked out of there. And I knew something had happened in my life that I could not explain. There was something going on in my life that I couldn't relate to other people. You know, but I knew what it was because God had told me. He said, if I live in him and he in me, then he has given me the Holy Spirit to be to be my helper, my comforter. And, then, and now we're gonna we're gonna talk some more about that in a minute. But what is it gonna what is it gonna mean to me? But he said, and he has given us the Holy Spirit and verse 14, and we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Okay? Here's number two. I'm gonna if I live in him. All right, if, I, if he's living in me and I'm living here, I'm going to be a living, walking, breathing testimony. What does that mean? What does it mean to testify? Tell me what you think it means to testify on his behalf. What does that mean? Speak on his behalf. <clears throat> to speak on his behalf. To give evidence. Tell me how your life is a testimonial. How is your life a testimony? That it testifies to the... To, look at what he says again. He said, and we have seen and testified that the Father has sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. You don't have to say a word sometimes. I don't have to say a word sometimes. Sometimes my life will just exude that I am following a living, breathing Savior. Right? Do you believe He's alive? Do you believe He rose from the dead? Because if you don't, then you're not going to walk like Him. It's gonna, this is just going to be something you do on a Sunday morning is all it's going to be. Yeah, Tim? When you look in the mirror, you don't even recognize that guy in the mirror. You're like, you sure have changed. Mm -hmm. It's like, whoa. Sure have changed. Tell me some more. That I'm, my life is a testimony. My friends are going to change. My friends did change. I could not be with the same friends I had before. Because I was living a, a, a life that they weren't comfortable with. That they didn't recognize. Because my life was a testimony. And that, not to say that what was coming out of my mouth, you know, I was things were coming out of my mouth that they did not understand and they did not appreciate. Of course, I didn't do it very well back then. I was, uh, I was, uh, uh, I'm not going to say it because y'all going to say I'm still like that. <laughs> you know, I, I had, I, uh, you know, let's just say I, I didn't, I didn't make a lot of friends back then. We learned from came, our mistakes. Yeah, I made some mistakes. I did. I did make some mistakes. You know, I was I was overzealous. Let's put it that way. I was overzealous. I wanted everybody that I came in contact with. Grocery store cart, guy at the auto parts store, guy a customer walks in my my shop. I wanted everybody to know what I had. Okay? Everybody. Because I had had somebody from this church long time, 40 years ago. Walk into a place where I was at. I was lost, up over my head in sin, lost, and they never said a word. Now I know now why would they have? They did. They weren't. They because if they had said it then, you know what would happen? I would have rejected it right off the bat. I would have rejected it. But what I I realized is that in early on, man, I want to be. A, I want to have that testimony where I'm going to tell it to them and let, give them the opportunity to tell me go away. Doesn't work that way. It didn't work that way. So my life is a different testimonial now. Now we're online. People all over the world have a chance to see us, you know, and, and listen to this class. We're online on Wednesday nights. And have, you know, people all over can watch and, and experience and ask questions. And, you know, and so that's that's testifying that I believe that, the sa that Jesus is the Savior of the world. A testimonial. You have to ask yourself, okay, you know, Am I, am I, is my testimony good? If you're going to go to court and your, and your, your freedom hangs in the balance, do you not want witnesses that know the truth and have the courage to say the truth? No, is that what you want? Yeah. Because you could go to jail if they don't, right? I want, I want, God wants me to be, to testify as a witness to what I know. Now, I haven't seen it, not like John. John said, 
I'm an expert witness because I saw it. That's what he says in the first part of this letter. He said, you can believe what I said because I saw it. I was there. I tasted it. Touched it. Was with it. With me. So do I have anything to testify about? Do you have anything to testify about? Do you? Good. Should. Yes. Vincent says should. Do you have anything to testify about? Yeah. What do you have to testify about? What is the what is the testimony that can prove that uh, that he is the son of God in your life? I think uh, I think you know, and, and people have said, "Well, you talk about yourself too much." No, I, I want you to know where I came from. I want you to know how bad it was and how difficult that was, so that you know that something happened to me. Something happened that. That maybe you can't explain in your own life, but if it can happen to me, it can happen to you. You know, if it can happen to me, absolutely, wherever you are, it can happen to you as well. You can look at that life and say, Dan's no better than I am. And if God changed him, and he's standing there, you know, I, I almost failed speech class, guys. I had two classes that I almost failed, trigonometry and speech. Now, trigonometry, I understand that, okay? That's a hard class. But speech, all you got to do is get up and talk. Why do you think that I can do that now and I couldn't then? That's a testimonial, guys. And then look at the look at the third thing he says. He says in verse 15, If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. What does it mean to acknowledge someone? What does that mean? Well, we were having a meeting like I was looking at our dictionary and I was looking because I forgot to do this. Was, and it says, to admit to be real. To admit to be real. To acknowledge means to admit to be real. To recognize the existence of truth or something, event, or someone. I acknowledge Jesus. I, what does it say here? What, look at what he said. I acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God. I acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God. Now, that's not... That, in some places, that's not popular. One day, it may not be popular here. It was not popular in Peter and John's time for them to say that. If you go back to Acts chapter 4, you know, and he said, and they healed the, the, the guy, and he said, he said, you know, they, he's crying for money, please give me money. He said, Ben, silver go, I don't have. What I have, I'll give you. Get up and walk. And the guy got up and walked. And they challenged him. The, 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 the hierarchy challenged him. And he said, and he said, they said, we don't want you to teach about this guy no more. And they said, can't do it. Sorry, can't do it. At some point, you know, we've got to recognize that, that, he, that he is the Christ, and I'm going to talk about it no matter what it costs. Paul and Silas got thrown in prison in Acts chapter 16 because they preached that Jesus was the Son of God. Didn't they? It could get, we just talked about that in our meeting. Well, it could get that way here. At some point, we'll have to decide, what are we going to do? Am I going to acknowledge? You know, and what, is, what does it do to people around when I acknowledge that? To many people, it doesn't mean anything. They don't care. But this is, what does it look like for me to live in Christ? What does that look like? Analyze your life. Guys, if you're watching, analyze your life. Ask yourself, is my life a testimony? Can I say, absolutely, my life? And if it's not, then eradicate what isn't. Stop doing what isn't a testimony, an acknowledgement, because this is about him living in you. You don't want him coming to you one day and saying, uh, oh, man, you say, man, here I am, man. Look, man, I didn't do all, man, I did some good stuff, didn't I? Wow, ain't that something? And he's going to say, I don't know you. Get away from me. That you do not want to hear. So what do we do? We start to eliminate those things out of our life. We start to let God change us from the inside. Now, look at what he says next. Verse 16. He said, and so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. What does it mean? Tell me what it means to you to live in love. What does that mean? Now, I know this is about God living in me and me living in him. Us being a cohesive, connected unit. God lives in me. I live in him. That's what this, this salvation thing is about, guys. This is what makes the, his love complete. This is what perfects it. Him living in me, me living in him, and me loving you, and you loving me. That's what completes it. That's what perfects that love. Now, what does it mean to live in love? 
What does that mean? That's what he said. Look at what he said again. He said, and so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in him, lives in love, lives in God, and God in them. Tell me what it means to live in to live in love. What do you think it means? First Corinthians thirteen pops into my head. You know, love is love is patient. Love is kind. Love doesn't keep any record of wrongs. It, it, there's all there's a whole list of things there. What love is? What true love looks like? It does not do these things and these things. And if I live there, you know, we're, we've uh, we I've had counseling sessions before where I where that's the text that we use. That's where we started. We started that 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 class with talking about that particular event. You know, what are we going to do? And we go through each one of them. What does it mean to be patient within a within a, a, a unit, a two a couple? What does it mean to be kind? What is it? You know, we go through them. You know, what does it mean for you and I to live a life of love? What does it mean? I am going to do everything I can do when it comes to you in your life and me in my life to do what's best for you. To me, that's living a life of love. If I love you like it says, I am going to do what I deem necessary in your life to do to be what's good for you, to do the best I can. Now, that's not always going to be what you're going to like. Sometimes, I'm going to have to say things to you that you're not going to want to hear. But if I'm truly living a life of love, I'm going to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. And you're going to do the same for me. And you're going to do it in love. You're not going to do it in spite. You're not going to do it with a with an axe to grind. You're going to do it because you love me. Marriages stay together because they communicate. And they communicate love to each other. You know, George and I have not always liked each other. You know? Go figure. How in the world could she not like me all the time? Yeah. There's something wrong with that woman. There's something wrong with her. That, that's what I said. Must be something wrong with her. Could that she didn't like me all the time. Because I'm just a lovable, sweet little teddy bear all the time, right? <laughs> what are you laughing at? You don't know. My daughter-in-law sitting over there just grinning. My son got his head down like this, and, he, and he's laughing. I wish you guys could watch this, because because they, they really do this class at my expense sometimes. You, know, you walk into it. I do. Yeah, walk, do my wife, know. you do walk into it. You provide the opportunity. Yeah. The, the point here is... is uh, is we're gonna we're going to live in a way that is is uh, yeah I know that my wife lived her life it went from the time we were married to now she lived her life to do what was best for me it wasn't always fun I always like it and she may not even realize that's what she was doing but she grew up in a time when that's what women did that's how they lived that's how they treated their their husband no matter what that's what they did. Today it's not maybe not like that, but thankfully I didn't. I'm not in that time. So tell me what it means to you to live a life of love. Now, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's people in this room, or I know there's people at this church that have not always liked me much. All right, you know, maybe I I did some things that that were that didn't come across well. Didn't do some things that should have been done, and and they didn't come across well either. But if I if I'm stri if we are both striving to love each other, what are we going to do? If we're both striving to live a life of love, what are we going to do? When we talk, what's going to happen? It'll get fixed. It gets fixed. If we're living a life of love, right? It gets fixed. If if we if if we're not living a life of love, it doesn't get fixed. And people have access to grind, and they have they have a. A, you know, they have a growl on it. They walk into in a building, they see you, and they walk the other way. You know, yeah, Tim. When you have a, a conflict with the brother and try to straighten it up as quick as possible, that's going to give us. Okay. And you get through that point because you need to. I've I've been there, and you get through it, and it's over. It's you know, he he's telling us. You know, there there's some things. What it's going to look like if you if we're if he and I are together. I'm going to have the Spirit living in me. I'm going to testify about Him. I'm going to acknowledge Him. And we've already looked at a couple of texts in the in here that where it talks about Him coming in the flesh, that we have to acknowledge that He came in the flesh. We have to acknowledge that the Father and Him are one. This is only the third one of acknowledgement. And then He says, right after that, He said, this is what, look at what it's going to look like. God is love. Whoever lives in Him lives, love lives in Him. 
in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence. And I'm, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Look. He says, and so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. I'm, I'm amazed at how many people that I that we come in contact with, people in the world, that uh, that believe, oh, all I have to do is is do this, this, and this, and God, God automatically has to save me. This is about a lifestyle, guys. This is about a lifestyle that I have decided and God has decided for me, and I have decided I'm going to live the lifestyle that God tells me to live. And this is what he's telling us. This is what we do. We live a life of love. We live. We love each other. We know him. We have a, a, a relationship with him. It's not just about I go to church on Sunday. That's not good enough. It's not enough. There has to be what we do all the time. And then I want you to look at verse 17. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. Do you want to have confidence when Jesus comes back? Okay. I'm not going to, I'm going to tell you where, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5, 6, and 7 says what it's going to be like when Jesus comes back. So it says, you know what it says? It says he's going to come back in flaming fire with his powerful angels take vengeance on those that do not know God and those that have not obeyed the gospel. Guys, I just as soon not have to experience all of that. Would you not, not as well? I don't know what that's going to look like, but just from the text, it sounds bad, doesn't it? He's going to come back in blazing fire with his powerful angel and take vengeance. I've seen what happens when it's in the book when God takes vengeance on someone. It's not pretty. It's ugly. And Jesus is going to come back with his power. I don't know how many that's going to be. What is going to come back? One, five, fifty, a hundred? How many is he going to come back with? He told he told the apostles, don't you know I could call legions of angels? That, I mean, that's that's six thousand. One, six thousand. How many is he going to call? Five, ten, twenty, thirty legions? I don't know. He's going to call enough to do the job, isn't he? And he's going to take vengeance on those that have not, that have a relationship with the Father. That's what it says. Now, I want to have confidence. What gives me that confidence? What gives you that confidence? It tells me in Hebrews chapter 10 that I walk into the throne room of God with boldness. I have no business being in the throne room of God. I have no business being there. But I have every right to be there because of what Jesus did on the cross. Jesus shed his blood on the cross and cleansed me so that I have every right to be in there. I don't belong in there, but I have every right to be there because of what he did for me. And that should give us confidence. Are you are you uh, are you confident in the way that that uh, that your life is going? You comfortable in the way your life is going? Are you? You can go like this, like that. I'm not gonna call you out. I promise. Working on. It. Working on. It. Okay. Yeah. Good. Working on. It. Vincent said, "I'm working on it." So am I. Vincent, you and I are saying, "I'm working on. It. I'm working on it." You know, I'm comfortable where I'm at right now. But you know what I see down the way? I see that there's room for improvement. I got to improve myself. I got things I got to do better. But but God loves me now. He loves me now. And I'm striving to do this. We're striving to do it, right? I'm striving to be the very best I can be. Now, look at what he said. He said, this is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. Semicolon. In my text says, in this world we are like Jesus. Tells me up above, it says that God lives in me and I live in him. So I'm going to know it by the spirit. I'm going to know it by the testimony. I'm going to know it by the acknowledgement that I do for him. Here he says, you're going to know. He said, I'm going to have confidence. Love's going to be made complete in me. How? In this world, we are like Jesus. Tell me something. What was Jesus like? What was he like? Meek. Tell, he was meek. Did that mean he was weak? No. Nope. Tell me how, what, would Jesus, what was Jesus like? We really don't understand. What do you mean we don't understand? Totally, totally what he was. Okay. You have to really get in the Bible, dig, okay. and talk to God about it. How many, I'm, better I'm gonna ask, how many of you have ever had someone in your life that you really wanted to imitate? You want to be emulate. You want to be like them. Do you ever have somebody like Maybe it was a father or mother. I mean, you know, a good friend, maybe a best friend. Was it somebody in your life? Why did you, why did you want to follow them? Why did you want to, why did you want to imitate them? Why did you want to be like them? Well, what did they do? What they did was impressive to you. It was impressive. Yeah. What they did was impressive. How? Why? Why would you? Why, yeah, Tim. Why would you? So they they showed me that they were strong. They were powerful. Everything. Okay, and that's what you wanted. You want strength and power. Yeah. And they they showed that to you. Yeah. You know. Do you think you have been an example to someone in your life that maybe they have wanted to 
Emulate, and they want to they want to imitate. Want to be like you? You hope so. You hope so? Yes, sir. There used to be a commercial, a long time ago, back when you could still put cigarette commercials on online. I mean, on TV. Remember that? I, I was now some of you guys that's out before y'all before y'all's time. Marlboro Man. You know, Marble. Marlboro Man. I'm thinking of a different one. <laughs> Father and a son sitting by a tree. Yeah, that may have been Marble too. You know, and he's sitting by a tree, and he pack of cigarettes laying between them. And the guy's smoking on a cigarette, and the little boy looks at him, looks at that pack of cigarettes, and he reaches it, and, sh and it shows him reaching for it. He wants to be like his dad. In everything. In everything. I want to be like him. In everything I do. You know, now that's just one example. There are people that have had people in their lives, you know, good friends in their life. I want to be like him. I want to be, I want to be able to articulate, or I want to be able to talk like her, or whatever it was. You know, I remember Rudy Ray, you know, and, and I didn't want to be Rudy Ray, but, but man, I was so impressed with him. I was so impressed with what he was able to do and how eloquent he was. And I could take a text and just, I mean, just, I mean, make it come alive. Booty Pearson was another one. I'd go to the jail with Booty Pearson and the Old Testament would come alive. He would absolutely come alive. He could make, he could make you feel like you were standing in the ark. It was amazing. I'd never heard anything like that before. He could make you feel like you were standing there watching the cross and looking and seeing the blood drip off the cross. He made you feel like that. I don't know how you now, but I know how it was then for me. And man, I wanted to be like that. You know, so what did you see in Jesus that made you want to be like him? He's the exact representation of God. He's the exact representation of God. But what does that mean, Nancy? What does it mean to There's you? There's no higher standard. There's no higher standard. There's nowhere else to go above that. Nowhere else to go above that. Okay. What were the, what were the, the, the individual little traits, though, that you saw? Compassion. What were, compassion. <coughs> compassion. You know what I know about you? Very compassionate individual. I know how you talk about certain people and very compassionate. You very you really care about them. You cared about the people at the jail when you were going to jail. You cared about them. Yes, ma'am. You never have to wonder whether he's gonna tell you the truth or not. It's always he's honest, he's truthful. Okay. Always truthful. He was he always told the truth. Yeah. That's a that's a can be in some instances can be a lost art in people in people today. People don't necessarily know how to tell the truth. And so if I'm going to live in Christ, if I'm going to not, what it said, in this world, we are like Jesus. I remember something Booty told me a long time ago. He said, don't ever forget this one thing. You may be the only Jesus they ever see. Make sure what Jesus they're seeing. You know, so that means, gosh, man, I got to stop doing this. Got to stop doing that. I can't hide it, so that means I got to stop. If I'm going to be like Jesus in the world, what does the world need more than anything? They need Jesus. They need Jesus, guys. Right? They need Jesus. Where are they going to find Him? Are they going to? Are most people are not going to go here to find Him? You know, I've told we've got a counseling session we're doing right now, and I've told these individuals. I said, "There's one thing I want you to do," because they weren't ever reading a book. I said, "I want you to go read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John." And I want you to read it over and over and over. And I said, don't stop till I tell you to. Don't move on till I tell you to. Keep reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And that one person asked me, how come? And I said, because that's going to introduce you to the Savior. I said, this all back here, all this back here, up to Matthew, is just going to lead you to him. And all this, past that, how to stay in him. But all that is about how do I come to know him? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's where I get introduced to him. And when I get introduced to him, that's where I find out what these traits are like. I'm listening to other guys after that. They're telling me about him. But I wanted to know, first, I wanted to see, I wanted to, I wanted to listen to him talk to me. I wanted to know, what does it mean if it's going to say in this world we are like Jesus? What does he look like? And you know what? Man, I messed this up. Gosh, man, I don't look like it sometimes. I really don't. I'm impatient. You know, I can be, I can get aggravated many times too quickly. You know, I don't say the things I'm supposed to say when I'm supposed to say them. So I'm a work in progress like Vincent here, right? Like we all are. But am I better today than I was before? Am I going in the right direction now that I wasn't going before God? Yes, I am. I'm different. I'm not the same person I was before. I want people to see that when they, when they, you know, sometimes I've got to force myself to put a smile on my face. Don't you? 
Sometimes I walk into a store or something, and somebody's really got it. You know, they're they're really uh, they're really upbeat, and you know, I, sometimes I can't stand that. <laughs> I can't stand that. You know, what do you got to be so happy about? You know, I'm the one, I ought to be really happy like that. You know, and they're and they're just a bubbly, and you know, I asked why I said I said, man, life must be pretty pretty good for you. You know, it wasn't, but just it was their personality. They were just they were just happy. I ought to be that way, right? I'm not always. <clears throat> you know, sometimes I let problems affect me in a way that that you know did Jesus you, I can't see Jesus letting his letting the problems affect him that way where he wasn't everything everybody needed when they you know did he get aggravated sure he got aggravated he got angry he got angry of course he did there's nothing wrong with that but the point is is what was the what was the goal what was the motive what was the point of it when he came to the to the temple you know I mean they're they're making a fortune off these poor people and he gets aggravated he said that's not what this temple is for You've turned it into a den you know, of thieves. That's not what this is for. So what is it going to look like for me? And I don't—I didn't expect you guys to all talk today. I just wanted you, I want you to think about it. What does it mean for me to, in, in this world, to, to, look at what it said. And you ought to underline and highlight this verse. In this world, we are like Jesus. If anybody was going to give a testimony about you, would they have to lie to say that they that you remind them of Jesus? Or would they even know who that was? And nothing you had done had convinced them any of it. It's tough. It, that's pretty, tough, isn't it? Sad. Nothing's already <laughs> fascinated me as Peter. Okay. okay, Peter, all right. He was probably, of the disciples, he was probably the closest to Christ because mm -hmm. he could really mm -hmm. say anything he wanted. Peter, yeah. Mm -hmm. And... Look what he did mm -hmm. in crucial times. Mm -hmm. Of course, he repented. Didn't, didn't 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 do well, did he? At times. No. But the guy that's writing this letter was the one that Jesus said, "The one I love." Okay, and he says at the beginning, "I you can believe my testimony because I was there." And so when he talks about this, when he talks about being Jesus in the world, you know, he's the only one at the cross. He's the only one. Hit him. Jesus' mom and Mary are the only ones standing there. Where's the rest of them? Where'd they all go? Well, John was there. That's what I'm saying. John's the only one. He's the only one there. Where's the rest of them? They're all gone. They're all gone hiding. Okay? So when John talks about that, I said, okay, I'm going to listen to this. I want to see what does John have to say to me. What do I need to change about Dan? And I don't need you to tell me. Don't Please don't come after and say, you want to live? <laughs> No, Nancy, you can't give me a lift. We don't. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, how am I going to find out? I'm going to read the book. I'm going to read the book and I'm going to find out what is Jesus like? What was he like? What What did he do when it when there was time to be compassionate? When it was time to be humble? When it was time to be meek? What did he look like? What did it, what did it sound like? And then, I wanna, then I'm going to take those things and I'm going to apply those principles to my life because I want, I want to make this love complete. I want to perfect this love. And and it, I don't want to be the one that breaks the chain here, in this in this whole scenario. If God's going to, wants to live in me and I live in Him, I'm the only one here that can break this chain, and I don't want to do that. So I want to find a way to make sure that my life is exuding Christ, and so when they see me, they do see the Jesus of the book. Now, you know, of course, we got work to do. I understand that. I understand we do. I do. I know that. Yes, ma'am. I can give you a real good example of emulating mm -hmm. go ahead because for years i heard you say read matthew mark luke and john mm -hmm. and that's where you get to know jesus mm -hmm. i can't tell you how many times i've taught that very thing of the jail yeah i got it from you. well i appreciate that you know i i, I and i got it from somebody else yeah. somebody else is the one that told me i think it was booty that that, that started that and I said, you know, I mean, that's the truth. If you're gonna if you're gonna teach someone to follow Jesus, be like Jesus, then that you gotta find out. They gotta find out where he where he comes from. You, gotta meet him. you know, and and you have to be guys. You have to be honest with yourself. What am I doing that I should not be doing? What am I doing that that the world would say, well, that doesn't look like the Jesus I read about in the book. What is it that I would need to change? And if I've got something that's like that. You need to tell me in love. You know, you need to tell me in love. But probably my wife's already told me. 
<laughs> Probably. Six times. Or more. Or Scott back there, the guy that you're going to watch this morning lead worship, Scott back there, he, he said six times. No, sometimes 16 or 60 times she's told me. You know, she said something the other day, and she said, I've told you and told you and told you. You know, I, I forget. You know, part of this is I forget sometimes. <laughs> I got all these wives patting on their husbands, man. <laughs> you know, the, 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 where this in is in this world, we are like Jesus. And I'm going to go back up to verse 17. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. You want to have confidence on the day of judgment? Then as you walk and breathe in this world, be like Jesus. It'll make the love complete, and it'll give you confidence. And stand upright when Jesus comes back, and not have to worry about it. He's going to say, man, I don't know you. Get away from me. I'll know him, and he'll know me, because of the life I've lived for him. Now, I want to do, I want to do this one more verse. Well, you know what? Well, I'm going to read it. There is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. And I'm not gonna. We're not gonna do this one yet. I've still got a couple of minutes, but uh, you know. But I want to start with that one next week because I think that's gonna take a little bit to talk about. To talk about what that means. Uh, any questions? Anybody got any questions, guys? If you're watching online and you got questions and you want to talk, I'd love to talk with you. Uh, you can. There's gonna be something scrolled at the bottom uh, that has a phone number. You can call Pam. Pam will get the message to me. I'll, I'll give you a call back. Uh, I may not call you right away because sometimes I got other things to do. But uh, you know, I'm not saying you're not important. But I, I do, uh, I do would like to. Uh, and if you have, if you want to challenge me, if you say, "Hey, I don't think that says it," let's talk. I'd love to sit down and talk with you and visit with you. Whatever you need, uh, please call and and let's talk. Let's pray, and we're going to be done. All right, Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity we have to be in you, and for you to be in us. We understand, Father, the testimony, the acknowledgement that has to come from our lives. And we also know that we, in our lives, in this world, have to have to be Jesus in this world. Help us to do that. We are we fall so far short. Help us to do that, Father. Help us to strive every day to find out what Jesus was like so that we can apply those principles and those precepts to our lives. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for the times you're going to help us to show that to a lost and dying world. That's what we want, Father. We want to help the world not to be lost and not to be dying. And it's in the name of your Holy Son we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys.